Ladies and gentlemen, with the national championship quickly approaching, coming up in a few days, I thought it would be a fun little activity to look back at the last 10 college football slash BCS national championships, starting with the 2012 national title. And it really is remarkable, the change in college football from this game to where we are now. So this was the All-SEC National title, Bama versus LSU. LSU coming into this game 13-0. I mean, just look at the quarterbacking. 11 of 17, 53 yards and an interception. How about Odell Beckham Jr., OBJ, playing in this game? A forgettable five receptions for 38 yards. Trent Richardson, Nick Saban, and Alabama. Guys, when we go through these 10 years, you're going to see a ton of Alabama. You're going to see a lot of Clemson. You're going to see some recent Georgia. And you're going to see a little sprinkling of Ohio State throughout this decade. So Bama wins this national title. Really, the like this was the last like pre-era national title in terms of how college football was played. With all the air raid, all the offense, even the SEC teams transitioning mainly to offense. 21 to nothing. Bama beats LSU in a snooze fest. I believe in New Orleans. I remember, yes, 21 to nothing there. AJ McCarron. What was AJ McCarron's career record? It had to have been something just crazy. He seemed to win every game. Uh, the next year, Bama back to back. They they just annihilate Notre Dame. This was the year Ohio State got disqualified from competing in the national title due to the Terrell Pryor tattoo situation with Jim Tressel. That Ohio State team was undefeated, but they did have a lot of close wins. They, they you know, and, and they didn't even compete in the Big Ten championship game. AJ McCarron, phenomenal. Eddie Lacy. How about Theo Riddick? Remember, I remember Theo Riddick on. The Detroit Lions, nice little third down back. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper was like the best wide receiver in college football, I feel like, for three years. And then he went fourth overall to the Oakland Raiders, I remember at the time. But Bama just annihilating Notre Dame. It's unfortunate for Notre Dame whenever they get into one of these games versus Bama or Clemson. It just, it's a total mismatch. And here's another one, 42 to 14, the final score there. Although Notre Dame has had a lot more success against Clemson recently, this was just a pounding. Bama goes back to back there. Next, we've got the Rose Bowl National Championship, the final BCS national title in Pasadena. What an amazing game. Jameis Winston and Florida State, they finish 14 and 0. And they win the national title. Devontae Freeman, uh, you know, you can see Sammy Coates, Trey Mason going for 200 yards. Nick Marshall having a decent game. Last, This was the last time Auburn was in a national title. Same thing with FSU. And this was the tw this would have been the 2014 national title. The years are really tough because of, you know, it's like this took place on January 7th. 2014. So I guess technically it's the 2014 national title, but it happened at the end of the 2013 season, if that made sense. And this was an epic game. It really was a good game back and forth. Auburn going up late or, or FSU coming back to win it. And then of course FSU enters 2015 or like whatever, 2014, 2015, as the number one team, they win all those close games. Then they get blown out in the first round of the playoffs by Marcus Mariota, Mariota and Oregon. And then that presents the first college football playoff national championship, 2v4, Ohio State beating Bama, Oregon beating FSU, Marcus Mariota versus Cardale Jones, the third stringer, Zeke Elliott, just an epic rampage. 36 carries, 246, and four touchdowns. And Ohio State crushes Oregon when they were, I believe they were seven point or six and a half point underdogs in this game. This game taking place in Jerry World, 
Urban Meyer captures his third national title and Ohio State comes back the next year just totally loaded and they're the only team ever to be the unanimous number one AP team, meaning every single AP voter voted them first in the preseason AP poll. I know it's just something weird, but I recently saw that stat, and it is true. Murray, I mean, this was kind of a weird game, the Ohio State-Oregon national title. Oregon actually came back in this game. Ohio State was up, you know, pretty decently early, Oregon made it a one-point game. I believe it was 21-20. to And then Ohio State just completely, thoroughly dominated the late in the third quarter and all of the fourth quarter to win this game 42-20 to and win the national title. And then we start our Alabama-Clemson rivalry. Bama beating Clemson. I remember this game. I believe it was... The Fiesta Bowl location, so the Arizona Cardinals Stadium in Glendale. Uh, We remember Nick Saban's onside kick to start the second half, I believe. Derrick Henry announcing himself to the world. How about Deshaun Watson? Pretty crazy. 405 passing yards, four touchdowns, and then 20 carries for 73 yards. Jake Coker, shout out. 25 pass attempts, 335 yards, two touchdowns. O.J. Howard, just ridiculous. 200 for a tight end. Five catches for 208 yards and two touchdowns. That's a rarity. O.J. Howard's had a really sad NFL career. Like, he, he's built so well to be a modern hybrid tight end in the NFL, but it just didn't work out. But this was really part one of the Bama-Clemson rivalry. This is Alabama's third national title in the previous, I think, five years at this point. So, or maybe six years, either way, Bama dominating college football, Clemson and Dabo Sweeney with Deshaun Watson will be back, and they get back there the next year. Remember this game, Alabama went up early 14 to nothing. Bo Scarborough had a long touchdown run, everyone thought Alabama was going to run away with it, Clemson comes storming back, and I believe they scored on that little out route by Hunter Renfro, Deshaun Watson, 56 pass attempts, just carrying the team. You know, they didn't run the ball very well. O.J. Howard, again, with another really good game. O.J. Howard knew how to perform in the national titles, I'll I'll say that. How about Jalen Hurts? Not good. 13-31, less than 50%, one touchdown, 130 yards, and Clemson comes back in the rematch to beat Alabama, 35-31, That's back-to-back national title appearances for Clemson, and they finally get one. Next, we've got Alabama again in the national championship, this time as the four seed. They beat Kelly Bryant in what what was a really boring 1v4 game. That was like Kelly Bryant's last year as a starter for Clemson. Trevor Lawrence ended up taking over the next year. Bama beats Georgia uh, 26-23. Tua, those stats are all of the second half and overtime. He, you know, Jalen Hurts. What were they down? Were they down thirteen to nothing or sixteen to nothing? I think it might have been sixteen to nothing. How about Najee Harris? I guess Najee Harris was a true freshman at this point. He barely played. He had six carries for sixty-four yards. Devontae Smith, who was a true freshman here. We remember the 41 the crazy touchdown catch on second and 26, but that was his only catch of the game. I don't remember that being his only catch. Sony Michelle for Georgia, decent game. Jake Fromm, Alex Smith 2.0. <laughs> That's what we used to call him. I mean, he did look like Alex Smith and he, and he was a game manager, but he goes 16 of 32 with two interceptions. Georgia at this point, they hadn't won a national title in forever. Everyone thought they were going to get it. They go up 23-20 to in overtime. Then they sack Tua for an epic 16-yard loss. And then Alabama has the 41-yard touchdown to Devontae Smith. And they win another national title. Amazing. And then the next year, once again, we've got another Clemson-Alabama game. 
And this was the height of Clemson's dynasty. Dynasty, Trevor Lawrence. This was in in Santa Clara, San Francisco Giant, uh, San Francisco 49ers Stadium. Trevor Lawrence, the true freshman, goes crazy. Tua throws an early pick six. Clemson annihilates Alabama, 44 to 16. And again, this was the height of their run. Travis Etienne, two touchdowns. Bama, it just it's one of those games where everything went wrong for Alabama. That's not to say Clemson wasn't good, but they weren't 30 points better than Alabama. It's just this is a game. Sometimes it happens during the national title. Everything goes wrong for you, and it, that's just the stars aligned that night for Clemson, and they win another national title and beat Bama. So they beat Bama two times in three years for two different titles. With Trevor Lawrence at this point, A true freshman. Everyone thought Trevor Lawrence was at least going to get one more ring after this. It didn't happen. As we can see the next year, LSU versus Clemson. This was a 1v3. Guys, we all know what this should have been. And it's no disrespect to Clemson. But we all realize LSU and Ohio State were the two best teams in college football that year. Actually, in 2019, Ohio State finished ESPN's number one team, according to the FPI, the Chase Young, Jeff Okuda, Justin Fields, J.K. Dobbins team. Yeah, I mean, they were loaded, but I'll be honest, guys. LSU was just a glitch. There was You, could, you just couldn't beat LSU. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, 463, five passing touchdowns. Pot, I, I think Joe Burrow had the greatest season of all time for a college football player. If you look back on his actual passing stats and his efficiency, it was ridiculous. And oh yeah, Clyde's Ed, Clyde Edwards-Alaire ended up being a first round pick. That year when LSU went into Tuscaloosa and beat Bama, that was one of the most epic regular season games I've ever seen. Uh, and that was like everyone at that point knew LSU was for real. And this game, to be honest, I think Clemson is lucky it was this close. Clemson should have never made this. We all remember the Sean Wade ejection when Ohio State was up 16 to nothing, and Clemson was punting at the end of the first half, or they should have been punting. They get a free first down on a fourth and 17 because of a fake targeting call. It is so crazy. I'm not saying Ohio State would have beaten LSU, but it would have been epic to see because J.K. Dobbins was also injured, would have been injured going into that game. Either way, LSU, possibly the greatest offense of all time this year, just or that year in 2019, just ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. I don't think anyone was beating LSU. Even with, though the LSU defense wasn't, you know, superstar elite, it didn't matter. They were just, they were good enough. They were good enough and they win this game fairly easily in New Orleans. So that's a nice home field advantage there for them. In 2020, oh my God, terrible. So what was the, what was the capacity in this game? 10,000 people? This game was at the Miami Dolphins home stadium and just horrible. Uh, I remember Trey Sherman getting injured on the first play of this game. Trey Sherman had one of the most weird careers you could have at Ohio State. He really didn't do anything. And then the the Big Ten Championship game, he runs for like 330 yards. And then against Clemson in the semifinal, he runs for like 190 and then this game, I mean, Ohio State, in terms of their defensive scheme with Kerry Combs, just completely in over his head. Devontae Smith was, if you want to talk about Joe Burrow being a cheat code in 2019, Devontae Smith's numbers in 2020, you couldn't put those numbers up if you were playing NCAA football 2014. 12 catches, 215, three touchdowns. Ohio State actually did a decent job against Najee Harris only averaging like four and a half yards per carry. Mac Jones. So it's funny. I was looking at the best quarterback seasons of all time in terms of QBR. And number one is Mac Jones. Joe Burrow is like number three. And I think Joe Burrow has better counting stats and more yards. But yeah, Mac Jones, the, the pandemic boy. During the pandemic year, he was just ridiculous. I mean, that is just, what did he go? 36 of 45 for almost 500 yards, five touchdowns. Justin Fields doesn't do anything. This was an annihilation, folks. Let's just call it what it is. And then you have the all-SEC 
national title happening this past year in Lucas Oil, in Indianapolis, in Big Ten country, with Georgia winning, the pick six seals it against Bryce Young in Alabama, and Bryce Young never ended up winning a national title with the... Oh yeah, I guess he did. He was on the roster, I guess, as a freshman, but in terms in terms of him starting, he never won a national title. Georgia, Stenson Bennett, they get it done Thanks to their defense, thanks to no turnovers. How about Bryce Young? 57 pass attempts that game. And Georgia wins 33-18. to And then, of course, this year, we've got Georgia listed as 12.5 point favorites taking on TCU, the Cinderella story. So, we'll have to see what happens. But I just wanted to look back at the past 10 national titles. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.